Welcome to this special video where we'll be exploring the enduring wisdom encapsulated in meditations by Marcus Aurelius, one of the most impactful philosophical works ever written. Penned by a Roman emperor almost two millennia ago, this text is more than just an antique treasure. It's a guidebook for living a meaningful, virtuous life. Meditations is composed of 12 books that delve deep into the core principles of Stoic philosophy. Concepts like rationality, self-control, the impermanence of life, and the interconnectedness of all things. While Marcus Aurelius originally wrote these reflections for his personal guidance, their universal truths make them applicable to anyone seeking to navigate life's challenges with poise, integrity, and wisdom. Whether you're new to Stoicism or a seasoned philosopher, this video will offer a concise summary of the key takeaways from each book in Meditations. So sit back, relax, and prepare to delve into the timeless teachings that have enlightened minds for centuries. In the first book of Meditations, Marcus Aurelius takes a retrospective look at his life and focuses on acknowledging the wisdom, virtues, and values he has learned from various individuals. Unlike the subsequent books, which contain philosophical musings, moral lessons, and stoic principles, Book One serves as a catalogue of gratitude. Marcus lists mentors, family members, teachers, and friends, detailing what he learned from each person and how these teachings have molded him into the individual he is. The book opens with his gratitude toward his grandfather Verus, from whom he learned modesty and manliness. From his father, he learned integrity and perseverance, gaining an understanding of what it means to live in accordance with nature and to be unaffected by material wealth or luxury. His mother instilled in him piety, generosity, and an avoidance of wrongdoing. Marcus also attributes to her his understanding of simplicity, as his mother showed him how to be content with little and live a life of modest means. Marcus pays tribute to his tutors and mentors. His governor taught him to be free from anger and uncomplaining, and he learns from another the importance of hard work and dedication. Marcus gives credit to the Stoic philosopher Rusticus for introducing him to Epictetus's teachings and encouraging him to lead a life of rationality and stoic calm. He also gives Rusticus credit for teaching him how to be straightforward and avoid rhetorical ornamentation in his speech and writing. Diognetus, another mentor, taught him not to be engrossed in trivial pursuits and influenced him to appreciate the philosophy of the Stoics. Marcus acknowledges his debt to Apollonius for teaching him the value of self-discipline, patience, and level-headedness. From Sextus, Marcus learned how to be kind and gentle, embodying a natural goodness that seemed effortless. Another influence was Alexander the Platonist, who taught him to write and speak in a manner that was uncomplicated and direct. The Emperor Antoninus is credited with showing Marcus how to lead with firmness, be just, and make rational decisions. In Book One, Marcus Aurelius does more than express gratitude. He engages in a form of ethical accounting. This practice reflects a core Stoic belief in the importance of examining one's life, recognizing both virtue and vice, and continuously striving for moral improvement. By acknowledging the lessons he has learned from each person, Marcus also outlines a moral and philosophical framework that guides the rest of his meditations. These virtues, among them integrity, simplicity, rationality, and kindness, are qualities that Marcus tries to cultivate within himself, following the example set by the people he admires. Moreover, Marcus's humility stands out as he freely admits that these people have provided him with moral and intellectual guidance, implicitly acknowledging that virtue is not a solitary endeavor, but one shaped by community and relationships. 
His tone suggests not just acknowledgement, but also a form of ethical commitment. He makes it clear that he must now live up to the virtues and lessons he has inherited. Book two of Marcus Aurelius's Meditations shifts gears from the reflective tone of the first book, transitioning into a more philosophical and prescriptive narrative. This book opens with one of the most famous passages in the work, often referred to as the Morning Prayer. Marcus starts by reminding himself that he will encounter people who are deceitful, selfish, egotistical, and ignorant. This is not because they are inherently evil, but because they do not know what is good and what is bad. Marcus advises himself to be understanding and tolerant, for he too shares the same potential for fault. This sets the tone for the rest of Book 2, which functions as an exploration of Stoic principles and a guide to virtuous living. A recurring theme is the emphasis on rationality and self-control. Marcus implores himself to separate his reactions from the events that provoke them. According to Stoic philosophy, events themselves are neutral. It's our judgments about them that cause us to perceive them as good or bad. By controlling our judgments, Marcus argues, we can maintain our tranquility and equanimity. Marcus also dwells on the concept of nature, both human nature and the nature of the universe. He emphasizes the importance of living in accordance with nature, by which he means fulfilling one's roles and responsibilities as both a rational and social being. To live contrary to nature, he suggests, leads to vice and unhappiness. The transience of life is another theme in Book 2. Marcus mentions the fleeting nature of existence, the constant change in the universe, and the shortness of human life. All the people who have lived before us, emperors and philosophers, rich and poor, are now gone. This should remind us that life is short, Marcus notes, and we should focus on living virtuously in the present moment. Marcus also delves into the topic of work and duty. He views labor not as a burden, but as a form of service to the community. He mentions that even animals and inanimate objects serve a purpose in the grand scheme of things. So why shouldn't humans? He asserts that we are all part of a larger community, indeed, part of the universe itself, and should act in ways that contribute to the common good. In this book, Marcus Aurelius outlines the stoic principles of detachment and rationality, recommending a certain emotional distance when dealing with life's difficulties. He suggests that one should view life as a play wherein roles are assigned, and it is one's duty to perform the assigned role well, regardless of what that role might be. He warns against getting caught up in earthly pleasures or external validation, stating that the soul should be its own source of validation and peace. Despite the often stoic undertones of detachment, Marcus also speaks of the importance of love and kindness. He suggests that the rational soul should not only be concerned with its well-being, but also with the well-being of others. He regards acts of kindness not as inconveniences, but as in line with human nature and thus as inherently fulfilling. Marcus's reflections in Book 2 also stress the limitations of sensory experience. He breaks down the pleasures of life into their essential components to show that they are not inherently good or desirable, but are only perceived as such. For example, he dissects a luxurious meal into the raw materials and processes that make it, reminding himself that extravagance is often just a well-marketed form of simplicity. In Book 3 of Meditations, Marcus Aurelius continues to delve into the Stoic principles that guide his life, focusing on themes like virtue, rationality, and the impermanence of human existence. The setting for this book is Carnuntum, a military outpost in present-day Austria, where Marcus was stationed during one of the Roman campaigns. The circumstances reveal how Marcus sought introspection and moral guidance, 
even while attending to the demanding tasks of governance and military leadership. One of the recurring elements in Book 3 is the emphasis on virtue as the ultimate good. Marcus holds that external circumstances, be they good or bad, are irrelevant to our moral well-being. Virtue is the sole arbiter of a good life. He argues that every human being possesses the rational faculties to discern right from wrong and should, therefore, strive for virtue above all else. Virtue is not only its reward, but also provides the person with inner peace and resilience against the changing tides of fortune. A significant portion of Book 3 is dedicated to the idea of self-governance and rationality. Marcus stresses that the ability to govern oneself rationally is the cornerstone of human dignity. He advises that one should always be mindful of their thoughts and actions, as they are within one's control, unlike external events. Marcus frequently mentions the idea that our opinions shape our emotional reactions. If we view an event as negative, we suffer, but the event itself is indifferent. This concept of the indifference of externals is a pillar of Stoic thought. Alongside the Stoic notion of rationality is a focus on duty and social responsibility. Marcus considers people as parts of a greater whole, bound by mutual obligations. He describes human beings as limbs of a single organism, implying that societal well-being is closely linked to individual well-being. He suggests that turning inward should not lead to self-centeredness, but rather make one more attuned to their responsibilities towards others. Marcus even argues that people who act unjustly harm not just their victims, but also themselves, by acting contrary to their rational, social nature. Another theme is the impermanence of life and the ephemeral nature of human concerns. Marcus often delves into historical examples, noting that the people we read about, the great heroes, politicians and thinkers, are all gone, their earthly concerns irrelevant. The knowledge of life's fleeting nature serves not to induce nihilism, but rather to focus Marcus's attention on the present moment. It's a reminder to not postpone living virtuously, for life is short and unpredictable. Marcus also revisits the idea of cosmic insignificance. He frequently employs the imagery of the universe as a constantly changing entity, where stars are born and die, and entire galaxies are formed and destroyed. In the grand scheme of things, human concerns are microscopic. However, Marcus flips the script on cosmic insignificance to posit that even if our lives are minuscule in the context of the universe, they can still be filled with profound meaning and dignity through the pursuit of virtue. Marcus makes a point to remind himself to avoid the temptation of praise and popularity. He notes that the applause of the masses is fickle and unreliable. True worth comes not from external validation, but from inner virtue. This perspective is a direct challenge to the social norms of Roman society, where honour and public opinion held great sway. The tone of Book 3, like much of the Meditations, is deeply introspective. Marcus writes as if he is counselling himself, reminding himself of the philosophic principles that should guide his life. Through these reminders, he provides timeless advice for anyone seeking to live a life guided by reason, virtue, and a sense of duty to oneself and others. In Book 4 of his Meditations, Marcus Aurelius extends his Stoic reflections, moving seamlessly between themes like morality, rationality, mortality, and the nature of human experience. The book is a mix of ethical aphorisms and philosophical considerations, revealing Marcus's intricate thinking about human life and the role of a Stoic philosopher king. A recurring theme in Book 4 is the need for individual integrity 
and authenticity. Marcus stresses that the opinions of others should not guide one's actions or moral compass. Instead, he emphasizes that each individual has an inherent moral framework that should govern their actions. This is the path to true freedom, he suggests, arguing that one should not act as if they would be ashamed to be caught doing so. This level of self-responsibility and internal moral guidance is pitched as an ideal throughout the book. Marcus devotes considerable thought to the ephemeral nature of life and human achievements. He points out that the memories of most people fade swiftly after their deaths, swallowed by the passage of time. Even the most lauded deeds and reputations are transient, eventually yielding to oblivion. Rather than finding this demoralizing, Marcus uses it as a point of focus. The temporary nature of life, he suggests, should compel us to live virtuously and authentically, focused more on our own conduct than on external validation. In line with this thought, Marcus also revisits the concept of cosmic insignificance, another theme that runs through the meditations. The universe is vast and continually changing. Human lives are but blips in the grand scheme. Marcus finds solace in this perspective as it frames individual hardships and trials as negligible on a cosmic scale. It serves to neutralize any self-pity or exaggerated sense of one's own problems. This book also touches upon the Stoic principle of accepting things as they come while exercising control over one's own reactions. Marcus elaborates on the idea that circumstances are neutral. It's our judgments that assign value to them. Therefore, he advises, it's within one's control to maintain equanimity regardless of what occurs. By maintaining a disciplined mind, one can meet hardship with resilience and fortune without arrogance. Marcus reminds himself to treat each event as a natural occurrence, neither good nor bad, and to respond with rationality and virtue. Marcus holds that one should live a life in accordance with nature, fulfilling their potential as a rational and social being. He argues that we should act in a way that benefits society, echoing his earlier assertion that human beings are like limbs of a single organism. When one person suffers or acts unjustly, it affects the whole community. Social responsibility is not just a duty, but a natural part of human existence, according to Marcus. One of the more personal moments in Book 4 is Marcus's internal admonishment about his perceived flaws. He notes that despite reaching an advanced age, he still finds himself struggling with certain vices and irrational behaviours. This self-critique adds a layer of humanity to Marcus, portraying him not as a sage who has all the answers, but as a person striving for self-improvement. The tone of the book remains introspective and meditative, as Marcus writes primarily for himself. He is grappling with the complexities of human existence, the ethical obligations of being a leader, and the eternal questions of philosophy. Each entry serves both as a self-reminder and a universal lesson, providing insights that remain relevant today. Book 5 of Marcus Aurelius's Meditations takes readers deeper into the Stoic principles and ethical considerations that guided him in his dual roles as a philosopher and Roman emperor. The book engages with the themes of justice, duty, and the transience of life, interspersing these with considerations on rationality and virtue. Marcus continually frames these discussions as personal admonitions, instructing himself on how to deal with specific ethical and philosophical challenges. One of the key themes in Book 5 is the concept of justice. Marcus asserts that justice is not merely an abstract ideal, but an integral part of the world order, akin to other natural laws. Just as fire ascends and stones fall, Human beings, by their nature, are called to act justly, 
He claims that wrong actions arise from ignorance and a lack of understanding about what is good. This view provides Marcus with a rational basis for forgiveness and compassion, seeing wrongful actions as mistakes in judgment rather than inherent evil. Duty and responsibility are recurrent themes as well. Marcus muses on the challenge of fulfilling one's responsibilities even when it feels laborious. He suggests that even nature's most basic elements perform their functions without complaint, from the bee gathering nectar to the tree providing shade. Humans, therefore, should complete their duties without fuss or desire for recognition. One must act correctly simply because it is the right thing to do, not because it will garner praise or rewards. In keeping with previous books, Marcus discusses the impermanence of life. He constantly reminds himself that life is fleeting and that both he and his accomplishments will one day be forgotten. He underscores the idea that our time is borrowed and could be reclaimed at any moment, urging himself to make the most of the present. This stoic confrontation with mortality serves to heighten the importance of living justly and virtuously right now, in the present moment, rather than deferring these duties to an uncertain future. The relationship between the individual and the cosmos also takes centre stage in Book 5. Marcus suggests that humans are fragments of the universe, and the actions of one impact the whole. The implication is that living virtuously and justly is not only beneficial for oneself, but contributes to the harmony and order of the universe. In this, Marcus's Stoicism intersects with a kind of cosmic spirituality. He posits that all things are interconnected, and this interconnectedness itself gives weight to our moral choices. Marcus also delves into the topic of self-discipline, particularly regarding desires and emotions. He observes that giving in to immediate gratifications can often lead to long-term problems and regrets. Through the exercise of reason, he suggests, one can rise above petty desires and emotions to lead a life befitting a rational being. This discipline is not merely a route to self-control, but is portrayed as the pathway to true freedom. For Marcus, Freedom lies in one's ability to act in accordance with reason and virtue, unswayed by external influences or inner passions. Interestingly, Marcus frequently employs a technique of breaking down experiences into their basic elements to reveal their transient or trivial nature. Whether discussing the sumptuous elements of a royal feast or the allure of sexual desire, he dissects these experiences to their rudimentary parts as a way of emphasizing their fleeting value. This technique serves as a tool for detachment, a means to free the mind from the immediate pull of sensory experiences. As in previous books, Marcus emphasizes the importance of focusing on what is within one's control and accepting what is not. He urges himself to stop worrying about how others see him, and to focus on his own actions and judgments which are within his power to change. This concept is essential to Stoic philosophy and remains a point of emphasis throughout the Meditations. Book 6 of Marcus Aurelius's Meditations offers an intimate look at the emperor philosopher's thoughts on moral and intellectual growth, human nature, and the philosophical ideals that guided him. This book is often considered one of the more personal entries in the Meditations as it showcases Marcus's reflections, advice to himself, and even his doubts. It serves as both a personal journal and a philosophical guide, merging Stoic tenets with a deep understanding of human complexities. A dominant theme is the Stoic ideal of self-mastery through rational thought. Marcus argues that human beings possess the faculties for reason, which separates them from other animals. Thus, to live in accordance with human nature, one must act rationally. 
He posits that the rational mind is like a fortress, capable of offering sanctuary from external hardships and trials. Our judgments and reactions are the only things truly within our control, and thus we should focus on cultivating rational thoughts. Marcus also emphasizes the practice of self-examination and the importance of a life committed to personal growth and moral integrity. He often speaks as though he's giving himself advice, identifying the pitfalls of arrogance and the perils of deviating from a virtuous path. He discusses the necessity for constant moral vigilance, suggesting that goodness is not an end state, but a process that requires ongoing effort. Book six is notable for its thoughts on governance and leadership. Marcus was, after all, not just a philosopher, but also a ruler responsible for an empire. He outlines the virtues essential for good governance, justice, wisdom, and integrity. He seems very aware of the moral weight of his decisions, highlighting the importance of these virtues, not just for personal development, but for the welfare of his subjects. He acknowledges the temptations and pitfalls that come with power and advises himself to act justly and wisely, prioritizing the common good over personal gain or glory. Another important topic is his exploration of change and impermanence, which is a recurring theme throughout the meditations. Marcus often meditates on the fleeting nature of life, wealth, and fame. He speaks of how quickly things change, citing that what was once a thriving city could be a ruin in the future, and a mighty empire can fall. The idea is not to induce despair, but to bring about a sense of urgency and focus. Marcus uses the concept of impermanence to emphasize the importance of using time wisely and acting virtuously in the present moment. Interestingly, Marcus spends some time discussing the inherent value of different occupations, arguing that every role in society, from the baker to the farmer to the emperor, has its own dignity and worth. This perspective seems to tie back to his stoic belief in the interconnectedness of all things and people. Each person, no matter their status, plays a vital role in the functioning of the world. The book also contains expressions of Marcus's doubts and concerns. Despite being one of the most powerful men in the world during his time, he speaks openly about the challenges of living up to his own philosophical and ethical standards. This vulnerability adds a layer of relatability and shows that the pursuit of virtue is a struggle, even for a Roman emperor. It reveals the meditations for what it truly is, a work in progress, a philosophical diary where Marcus recorded his efforts to improve himself and live up to his stoic ideals. Marcus is keenly aware of the distractions that can divert one from a virtuous path. He cautions against being swayed by public opinion or becoming entangled in petty disputes. He reminds himself to stay focused on what truly matters, living a life in accordance with reason and virtue. This narrow focus, he argues, is the key to tranquility and happiness. Book 7 of Marcus Aurelius's Meditations continues the Roman emperor's inward journey, exploring themes of resilience, ethical conduct, and the human condition through the lens of Stoic philosophy. This collection of personal notes serves as both a self-help guide and a moral compass for Marcus, but it has since become a timeless text, offering life lessons that resonate across the centuries. One of the recurring topics is the notion of resilience in the face of adversity. Marcus delves into the importance of enduring hardships and inconveniences as a part of life. He frames these challenges as natural occurrences, likening them to the challenges faced by a doctor or a sailor in their professional lives. According to Marcus, the nature of life is such that it will present obstacles, but it is one's duty to face them without complaint. It's not the events themselves, but our judgments about them that cause us distress. Another central idea in Book 7 is the transient nature 
of human existence. Marcus continually reminds himself that he is a part of the cosmic cycle, where creation and decay happen in an endless loop. He talks about the impermanence of human life and the ultimate insignificance of individual worries and achievements in the grand scheme of the universe. He sees life as a brief interlude in the ceaseless flow of time, reinforcing the stoic idea that external conditions, good or bad, are fleeting and shouldn't disturb the tranquility of the wise person. Marcus also spends considerable time in Book 7, contemplating the complexities of human behavior. He argues that all actions stem from either instinct or reason. Marcus seems to grapple with the flaws and inconsistencies in human action and thought. He offers himself advice on dealing with irrational and difficult people, positing that such behaviors stem from ignorance of what is good and evil. Rather than becoming angered or frustrated, Marcus advises understanding and compassion, treating the vices and failings of others as akin to physical illnesses. One of the more remarkable elements in this book is Marcus's discussion of the self. He advises the reader, and by extension, himself, to look inward for validation. In a society that often measures worth by external achievements or social standing, Marcus's words ring as a poignant reminder of the irrelevance of external judgment when it comes to personal virtue. He stresses that your worth is determined by your actions and the content of your character, not by what others think of you. Another significant theme in Book 7 is the concept of rationality and the divine. Marcus believes that the world is organized in a rational and coherent manner, implying a divine reason or God behind it. According to him, this divine reason gives life its order, thereby making rationality and virtue closely aligned with the natural way of things. Marcus advises that one should live in accordance with this divine rationality, which is another way of expressing the central Stoic tenet of living according to nature. On the topic of death, Marcus takes a stoically neutral stance, viewing it as a natural part of life. He suggests that if gods exist, then death can't be evil, and if gods don't exist or don't care about human affairs, then an eternal oblivion should also not be feared. Death is simply a return to the elements, a transformation similar to the changes that naturally occur throughout life. The practicality of Stoic philosophy shines through in Marcus's guidance on day-to-day -day living. He promotes a disciplined lifestyle, urging attentiveness in every action and decision. He also stresses that one should always be on guard morally, maintaining their ethical principles even when they think no one is watching. This reinforces the Stoic idea that virtue is its own reward. In Book 8 of Meditations, Marcus Aurelius continues his exploration of Stoic principles, contemplating on various aspects of human nature, ethics, and the relationship between the individual and the universe. This book is notable for its emphasis on the ethical obligations we bear, not just to ourselves, but to society at large. In it, Marcus provides insights that are both deeply personal and universally applicable. The notion of self-improvement and self-regulation is a recurring theme in Book 8. Marcus encourages the reader to focus on refining their character, to act according to reason, and to not be swayed by external circumstances or opinions. He advocates for a focus on the present moment as the arena in which moral choices are made and virtues are exercised. Marcus also explores the idea that our thoughts shape our reality, urging the cultivation of a rational and disciplined mind as a safeguard against emotional turmoil. He advises that we should regard our rational faculties as our truest self and that these should govern over our desires and emotions. In this book, Marcus also delves into the concept of communal rationality. 
While Stoicism often emphasizes the development of individual virtue and wisdom, Marcus extends this to a broader social context. He argues that human beings are social creatures by nature, designed to work collaboratively and live in communities. As a consequence, rationality isn't just a personal endeavor, but also has a social dimension. He underscores that our actions should aim not just at personal benefit, but should contribute to the welfare of the community. In doing so, Marcus explores the interconnectedness of all people, stating that the wrongs done by one person affect the whole of humanity. Marcus further delves into the topic of death and impermanence in Book 8, but with a somewhat different tone than in previous books. Rather than using the transience of life to highlight the futility of worldly pursuits, he employs it as a motivational tool. He reminds himself that life is short and unpredictable, asserting that the unpredictability should encourage a sense of urgency in living virtuously and fulfilling one's duties. He suggests that knowing about the impermanence of life should propel us to live more authentically, to speak our truths boldly, and to act according to our principles without hesitation. The theme of cosmic unity reappears in this book as Marcus considers the individual's relationship to the cosmos. He maintains that we are all part of a greater whole and that understanding this relationship is crucial to both ethical conduct and personal tranquility. The universe is rational and ordered, he contends, and to live in agreement with this natural order is to live in agreement with reason. It is this sense of being a part of a greater, rational whole that provides an ontological grounding for Marcus's ethical principles. Marcus also continues to discuss the concept of divine providence, examining it through the lens of Stoic determinism. He suggests that everything happens according to a divine reason, a logos that permeates the universe. Even what seems evil or irrational on the surface has its place in the grand scheme of things. In this context, Marcus advises adopting a form of amor fati, a love of fate, where one not only accepts but embraces whatever comes their way as a component of divine reason. Amidst the philosophical meditations, Marcus also offers practical advice on dealing with everyday challenges. He touches upon the inevitable confrontations with dishonesty, ignorance, or malevolence in others. His counsel is that of understanding and tolerance, reiterating the Stoic belief that such actions arise from a lack of wisdom and should be met with compassion rather than anger. Marcus also acknowledges his own shortcomings and mistakes, demonstrating a self-awareness and humility that add weight to his philosophical assertions. Despite his status as the Emperor of Rome, he neither exempts himself from moral scrutiny nor claims to have all the answers. In Book 9 of his Meditations, Marcus Aurelius turns his focus toward an array of concepts that further develop his Stoic worldview. As with other books in this collection, Marcus aims to cultivate moral and intellectual virtues, seeking to navigate life's challenges with wisdom and integrity. The topics in Book 9 range from the nature of the soul to moral behavior, from the understanding of God's will to reflections on mortality and human relationships. One of the key elements Marcus touches upon in Book 9 is the soul and its immortal or transient nature. Although Marcus doesn't firmly assert a belief in the immortality of the soul, he does contemplate what this means for living a virtuous life. He ponders whether the soul is immortal and part of the divine logos, or if it dissipates after death. Regardless of the answer, Marcus concludes that focusing on virtue in the present is what truly matters. The theme of mortality is not new to Marcus's meditations, but it is revisited in Book 9 with a heightened sense of immediacy. Marcus uses the idea of the shortness and unpredictability of life 
as a reason to concentrate on one's actions and thoughts. There is an urgency in his tone, encouraging himself, and by extension the reader, to appreciate the present, acting virtuously and wisely without delay. Marcus also discusses the concept of change as a natural and inevitable part of life. He often refers to the universe as being in a constant state of flux, a viewpoint rooted in both Stoic and Heraclitian philosophy. By internalizing this understanding of change, Marcus believes one can achieve greater equanimity, accepting the flow of events as part of the natural order rather than as disturbances to be lamented. He talks about change not just in terms of physical realities, like the alteration of substances, but also in the transitions of human lives and empires. This awareness of constant change is meant to serve as a grounding perspective, helping one to navigate the complexities and uncertainties of life with greater ease. Moral behavior and ethical principles are central to Marcus's meditations, and Book Nine is no exception. In this section, he often emphasizes the importance of integrity and acting in line with one's ethical beliefs, even when it's easier to follow the crowd or give in to temptation. Marcus warns against hypocrisy and advises the reader to stand firm in their convictions. He suggests that one's principles should not be swayed by the opinions or judgments of others, and that the sole focus should be on living a virtuous life as defined by reason and moral understanding. A remarkable aspect of Book Nine is Marcus's reflections on divine will or providence. He often delves into the Stoic idea that everything occurs according to a rational plan, guided by divine reason or the Logos. While he admits that human understanding of this divine reason is limited, Marcus finds solace in the belief that all things happen according to a meaningful order. Even if events appear unfavorable or challenging, he advocates for acceptance and even embraces them as facets of the divine plan. Further, Marcus reiterates the Stoic idea of universal brotherhood and interconnectedness. In multiple passages, he urges himself to act for the common good, to be forgiving, and to consider how his actions impact others. In Marcus's view, societal roles, whether one is an emperor or a citizen, come with the responsibility to contribute positively to the collective welfare. This aligns with his earlier thoughts about rationality having a social dimension. Virtuous actions are not just good for the individual. They contribute to the well-being of the entire community. Book 9 also contains some more personal reflections and musings, revealing Marcus as a deeply introspective person aware of his own shortcomings and continuously striving for self-improvement. This quality makes Marcus not just a philosopher-emperor, but also a relatable human being, grappling with the same moral and existential questions that have occupied thinkers for generations. Book 10 of Meditations by Marcus Aurelius serves as a repository of reflections and advisories, much in the spirit of the other books in this series. Covering an array of topics such as the importance of reason, ethical principles, human nature, and even the structure of the universe, Marcus continues his quest for self-understanding and moral integrity. This book is an embodiment of Stoic philosophy, stressing the importance of rationality, moral virtue, and the acceptance of life's impermanence. Marcus opens with the idea that wrongdoing harms the doer more than the victim. He outlines that such actions emanate from a state of ignorance or misunderstanding about the nature of good and evil. To Marcus, the act of wrongdoing is evidence of a flawed judgment, thereby harming the one who errs in their ways. It is in this context that Marcus advocates for compassion and understanding rather than vengeance, emphasizing the stoic principle of educating the ignorant rather than despising them. One recurring motif in Book 10 is the power and role of reason, 
in human life. Marcus strongly believes that reason differentiates humans from other animals. This faculty allows us not just to communicate, but also to form complex thoughts, organize our experiences, and attain wisdom. Therefore, living according to reason is tantamount to living according to nature, a primary tenet of Stoicism. Marcus argues that reason should be the guide in all actions and judgments, allowing for a life led in harmony with both the self and the universe. Ethical behavior and self-conduct are also focal points in Book 10. Marcus advises that one should act only in ways that one would be willing to advocate as laws applicable to all of humanity. In this, he echoes the Stoic variant of the Golden Rule, advocating for a universal approach to ethics that reflects a broader concern for the welfare of all, not just the self. He also stresses the importance of sincerity and honesty, stating that the mask one puts on cannot forever hide the nature of one's soul. Marcus contends that true virtue is its own reward and requires no external validation. Mortality and impermanence, themes Marcus often visits, are discussed in Book 10 as well. However, Marcus introduces a new nuance by contemplating the cyclical nature of existence. Life and death, creation and destruction are ongoing, interconnected processes, suggesting that what we often see as an end is just another form of beginning. Marcus uses this idea to confront his own mortality, finding comfort in the thought that his life, whether long or short, occupies only a brief moment in the boundless tapestry of existence. The concept of divine order, or the Logos, is revisited in this book. Marcus wonders about the nature of the gods and their relevance to human life. Regardless of the form or even the existence of higher powers, Marcus concludes that the principles of good living would remain the same. To act justly, speak the truth, and live a rational life. The idea here is that ethical living is rational living, and rational living is, in itself, in accordance with divine principles. Marcus also discusses the fickleness of public opinion and the inconsequentiality of fame and reputation. He emphasizes that public opinion is unreliable as it is often formed without proper understanding or wisdom. The pursuit of external validation is a futile endeavor, and Marcus advocates for an internal moral compass guided by reason and virtue. In his view, one should seek to live in such a way that even if the world were to wrongfully speak ill of them, the individual's conscience would testify to their true character. Additionally, Marcus touches upon the importance of mental fortitude. He suggests that when faced with external challenges, we can always choose our response. Challenges, therefore, become opportunities for us to exercise our virtue and reason. Book 11 of Marcus Aurelius's Meditations serves as an exploration into the nature of the self, the mind, and the essence of virtuous living. A common thread throughout the book is Marcus's appeal to Stoic principles to guide his actions and thoughts, making the work a rich tapestry of philosophy, ethics, and self-reflection. One of the standout themes of Book 11 is the Stoic ideal of self-sufficiency. Marcus argues that true contentment comes from within. He champions the idea that inner tranquility is not dependent on external factors, but rather on one's own mind. If one can master his own thoughts and emotions, he has achieved the highest form of freedom, impervious to external chaos and uncertainty. In this, Marcus echoes the Stoic view that external things, wealth, status, and even health, are not good or bad in themselves, but rather indifferent. What matters is how one reacts to them, and the ability to maintain composure regardless of circumstances is the hallmark of a virtuous life. Marcus also delves into the idea that life is short and time is fleeting. 
This notion serves as a powerful motivator for him to engage in meaningful activities and shun trivial pursuits. He notes that most people waste their lives in pointless distractions and avoid focusing on the things that genuinely matter. The temporality of human existence is a recurring theme throughout meditations, but in Book 11, Marcus uses it to stress the importance of acting in accordance with one's nature and focusing on actions and thoughts that contribute to a life well lived. Time is limited, so one must use it wisely, prioritizing what contributes to virtue and wisdom. The discourse in Book 11 also includes a detailed reflection on the nature of the universe. Marcus describes it as a living entity, constantly changing yet fundamentally rational. Everything is interconnected in a kind of cosmic unity. Marcus argues that understanding this unity helps one to act according to reason and to live in harmony with nature and other human beings. These ideas are underpinned by the Stoic belief in Logos, a rational principle that governs the universe. Accepting the Logos, according to Marcus, makes it easier to accept life's hardships as part of a grander design. Marcus touches on the concept of justice and social virtue, expressing a commitment to fairness, integrity, and communal well-being. He emphasizes that rational beings are social by nature and that one of the highest forms of virtue is to contribute to the welfare of society. This could be through individual acts of kindness, adherence to law, or by promoting justice on a broader scale. The notion here is that virtue is not an isolated individual goal, but something that has wider social implications. Acting justly is in alignment with both human nature and the cosmic order, reinforcing the stoic idea of interconnectedness between the self, society, and the universe. Additionally, Marcus explores the power of the mind in shaping one's reality. He claims that the mind transforms external events through perception. An event is neither good nor bad. It's the individual's judgment that makes it so. This perspective offers a form of mental resilience, allowing one to navigate challenges and hardships with equanimity. This form of cognitive reframing is deeply rooted in Stoicism and serves as a practical tool for enduring life's difficulties. Towards the end of Book 11, Marcus brings his attention back to himself, contemplating his own shortcomings and areas for improvement. It's a humbling moment that serves to humanize him, revealing his constant struggle to live up to the Stoic ideals that he so passionately writes about. He admits to not being a perfect sage, but aspires to get closer to that ideal with each passing day. This self-reflection serves as a form of mental accounting, keeping him grounded and focused on his ongoing moral development. Book 12 of Marcus Aurelius's Meditations serves as a fitting conclusion to his philosophical journey, tying together many threads and themes that have been scattered throughout the previous books. The focus in this final book is on self-mastery, the impermanence of life, the interconnectedness of the universe, and the ultimate aim of living a life in accordance with reason and virtue. In this culmination of his Stoic philosophical reflections, Marcus aims to synthesize his thoughts into a coherent worldview, offering practical advice for a life well lived. One of the most salient features of Book 12 is the continued emphasis on the Stoic principle of rationality. Marcus reiterates that reason is the highest faculty humans possess and should guide all actions and thoughts. For Marcus, rationality is not just about logical analysis or intellectual pursuits. It's about living a life of virtue. According to him, reason equips us to discern right from wrong, to maintain emotional equanimity, and to strive for a greater understanding of ourselves and the world. The notion of interconnectedness also plays a significant role in Book 12. 
Marcus views the universe as a single living organism, a cosmopolis, in which everything is interconnected in a grand network of cause and effect. All beings are part of this network and should act in a way that benefits the whole. This idea isn't merely a metaphysical claim, but has ethical implications. It provides a rationale for why we should care about others and live justly. For Marcus, to act against this interconnected web is to act against one's nature and against reason. Marcus returns to the theme of death and the fleeting nature of life as well. In his view, our brief lifespan is but a moment in the vast expanse of time, and even the most celebrated individuals will be forgotten. However, this is not a cause for nihilism or despair. Rather, it's a call to action. Because life is short, Marcus argues that we must focus on what truly matters, which is to live a life of virtue and wisdom. The impermanence of life makes each moment precious, urging us to act in a manner aligned with our highest values. A recurring idea in Book 12 is the importance of self-control and emotional mastery. Marcus advises that we should not let external events disturb our peace of mind. He argues that we cannot control external circumstances, but we can control our reactions to them. Through discipline and the use of reason, one can maintain a sense of inner calm, even when faced with life's most challenging situations. This stoic equanimity, according to Marcus, is the hallmark of a truly virtuous individual. Marcus also touches on the concept of duty, reiterating the Stoic view that each individual has a role to play in the grand scheme of things. Doing one's duty is a form of active engagement with the world and contributes to the cosmic order. Marcus suggests that failing to act or shirking one's responsibilities is a violation of nature and undermines the harmony of the universe. In Book 12, Marcus is noticeably introspective, often engaging in self-examination. He asks himself probing questions, reflecting on his own conduct, decisions, and aspirations. This self-scrutiny reveals his ongoing struggle to align his life with his philosophical ideals. Despite being an emperor, Marcus does not exempt himself from the moral and ethical standards he sets. This honest self-assessment adds a layer of authenticity to his philosophical discussions, making them not just theoretical, but deeply personal.